dear all in my earlier lecture <coughs> we discussed about uh, deriving the equation for the critical depth critical velocity for a rectangular channel then we moved on to uh, deriving an equation for a non rectangular uh, channel the next topic is this constant specific energy kindly recall when we derived an equation for critical depth and critical velocity in both rectangular channel and non rectangular channel we assume that the discharge flowing in the channel is constant so in this case when i am talking about constant specific energy so we assume that the specific energy is constant and the discharge flowing in the channel is varied so let us start with the basics the specific energy equation is given by e is equal to y plus v square divided by 2g now q is equal to a into v so therefore v is equal to q by a so in place of v if you substitute this q by a you are going to get this equation as e is equal to y plus q square divided by 2g a square so call this as equation number 2 now so rearrange the terms so push this y term to the lhs you are going to get y e minus y is equal to q square divided by 2g a square i want the value of q therefore q is equal to a into root of 2g into e minus y square on both sides you are going to get q square is equal to a square into 2g into e minus y expand this on the rhs rhs side you are going to get q square is equal to 2g a square into e minus a square 2g into y at this point we make an assumption the assumption is discharge will be maximum if dq by dy is equal to 0 so differentiate the above equation with respect to y and equate the same to 0 so we are going to get an equation for this constant specific energy therefore if you differentiate the above equation with respect to y you are going to get so on the lhs side you have q square so when you differentiate that with respect to y you are going to get q into dq divided by dy that is equal to you have 2g a square e differentiate this with respect to y you are going to get 2g e into 2a into da by dy similarly minus 2g into 2ya into da by dy plus a square that is equal to 0 kindly recall in the last class i said so a is a function of y so what is wetted area wetted area is equal to the base width of the channel into the depth of water flowing in the or depth of fluid flowing in the channel so with reference to that we are going to differentiate this yeah, uh, that is very very important now da by dy is not is nothing but the top width so da by dy is equal to t so wherever da by dy is there replace that da by dy by t you are going to get 2ge into 2at minus 2g into 2yat minus 2g a square that is equal to 0 so on simplification you are going to get 2et minus 2yt minus a is equal to 0 i want the value of a a is equal to 2t into e minus y or e is equal to y plus a divided by 2t i repeat a is equal to 2t into e minus y i want the value of e so e is equal to y plus a divided by 2t 
But what is E? So E is given by y plus v square divided by 2g or y plus q square divided by 2g a square. Now equate the uh, two equations. E is equal to y plus a divided by 2t and E is equal to y plus q square divided by 2g a square. So you are going to get on simplification q square by g is equal to a cube by t. I repeat. So on simplification you are going to get q square divided by g is equal to a cube divided by t. Thus for a given specific energy the discharge in a given channel is maximum when the flow is in the critical state. I repeat, for a given specific energy, the discharge in a channel is maximum when the flow is in the critical state. The depth corresponding to the maximum discharge is the critical depth. That is what I showed in this uh, figure. Now this dotted line represents the critical depth. Now here corresponding to this critical depth, we have the maximum discharge. Now above this critical depth, we have subcritical flow and below this critical flow, we have supercritical flow. And we also showed that the critical depth is equal to two thirds the specific energy. Okay, now this figure is for a rectangular uh, channel because here I introduce discharge per unit width. Discharge per unit width is equal to capital Q divided by B. Okay, so this completes the theory portion as far as this uniform flow is concerned. Let us solve a couple of problems on these topics about this critical depth, critical velocity and this constant specific energy. Let us start with a simple problem. The problem goes like this. A rectangular channel which is laid on a bottom slope of 0.0064 is to carry a discharge of 20 meter cube per second of water. Determine the width of the channel when the flow is in critical condition. Take Manning's roughness coefficient n is equal to 0.015. This is the problem. So how to solve this problem? So solution, let the width of the channel be capital B. So since we are talking about a rectangular channel, so find discharge per unit width. So what is discharge per unit width? That is given by small q. Small q is equal to capital Q divided by B. So what is q? Q is 20 meter cube per second. Therefore, small q is equal to 20 divided by B. Now for a rectangular channel, the critical depth is given by Yc is equal to Q square divided by G, whole thing raised to one third. Okay, so in this case, so Q is 20 divided by B, Q square is 400 and uh, B square into g is 9.81 whole thing rise to one third. If you simplify this, you are going to get the value of yc is equal to 3.442 divided by b rise to two thirds. You know the value of yc? Now consider Manning's formula. Now Manning's formula is given by v is equal to 1 over n s to the power of half r to the power of two thirds. Now substitute the values. It is a rectangular channel. Q is equal to A into V. R V is equal to Q divided by A. So what is Q? Q is 20 given in the problem. So what is A? A is V into YC. Therefore, on the left hand side, in place of V, I substitute this Q by A that is 20 divided by B into YC. That is on the left hand side. Come to the right hand side. So 1 over n 
So n is 0.015 into r. So what is r? r is given by wetted area divided by wetted perimeter. Wetted area is b into yc and wetted perimeter is b plus 2yc. Therefore, byc divided by b plus 2yc whole thing rise to two thirds. That into the bed slope that is given in the problem that is given by 0.0064 whole thing rise to half. Okay. Now, if you simplify this and solving for B by trial and error, B works out to be 2.41 meters. I repeat, once you substitute the values, the unknown is B. Now solve for B by trial and error, you are going to get the value of B is equal to 2.41 meter. Okay, so let us take one more problem. So little bit uh, complex compared to the first problem. Let us see how to solve this problem. Problem goes like this. So it is not a complex problem. Again, it is a simple problem. For a constant specific energy of 1.8 Newton meter per Newton, calculate the maximum discharge that may occur in a rectangular channel 5 meter wide. This is the given problem. Now the solution. For a given specific energy, discharge is maximum when the flow is in critical state. I repeat, this is very important. For a given specific energy, discharge is maximum when the flow is in critical state. Thus, the depth of flow y is equal to yc. Now, we know the relation between the critical depth and, and the minimum specific energy. So, yc is equal to, I mean, yc is equal to two-third ec. Therefore, yc is equal to two-third into 1.8. Therefore, the critical depth works out to be 1.2 meter. Now, for a rectangular channel, this critical depth e, yc is given by q square divided by g raised to one-third. Just now we calculate the value of yc. yc is 1.2 that is equal to q square divided by g raised to one third. Therefore, q is equal to root of 1.2 q into 9.81. I repeat, small q is equal to root of 1.2 q into 9.81. If you simplify this, Q works out to be 4.12 meter cube per second per meter. Because right now we are talking about discharge per unit width. So once you get this discharge per unit width, find the total discharge. The total discharge Q is given by 4.12 into the base width of the channel is 5. Therefore, the discharge to the channel is 20.6 meter cube per second. Okay, again another simple problem. Now, we will go to the next problem which is quite complex. Let us see what the problem is. In a rectangular channel, 3.5 meter wide laid at a slope of 0 0.0036 Uniform flow occurs at a depth of 2 meter. Find how high can the hump be raised without causing the afflux. If the upstream depth of flow is to be raised by 2.5 meter, what should be the height of the hump? Take Manning's roughness coefficient equal to 0.015. This is the problem. 
So let me explain this problem in simple terms. Now this is a where the uh, uh, green object what I'm showing right now is a where. Now before constructing this where, this is the depth of water in the channel somewhere here. Now once you construct the obstruction here or a where here, so water comes from the upstream side, it starts rising at the where, okay. And once the water level rises above this top of the where, the excess water starts spilling over this where. This is the problem. Now, this is typically a non-uniform flow problem. And I'm going to solve this problem once again when I'm talking about non-uniform flow in the later lectures. Now, how to solve this problem? Let us see the solution. The area of flow section. Now, in order to solve this problem, okay, so I consider two sections. Section 1, 1, far away from the obstruction and section 2, 2, which is near the obstruction. Okay, kindly recall, in case of a non-uniform flow, there are two types of flows. One is a gradually varied flow, the other one is rapidly varied flow. How do we differentiate between gradually varied flow and rapid, rapidly varied flow? I said, if the depth changes over a long distance, then it is gradually varied flow. Now, if the depth changes within a very short reach, then we call it as a rapidly varied flow. Now, both gradually varied flow, or it is also called GVF, and rapidly varied flow are under non-uniform flow. Now, how do we classify, or how do we define this non-uniform flow? If the various physical parameters such as the depth, velocity, density, temperature, if they change from section to section along the reach, then we call the type of flow as a non-uniform flow. So non-uniform flow is further classified into two types. One is GVF, the other one is RVF, which we are going to study in the next lecture. So let us, we are going to study more about that in the later stage. Now to solve this problem, I consider two sections. Section 1 which is far away from the obstruction and section 2 is near the obstruction. Now let us talk about the section 1, 1 which is far away from the obstruction. Area of flow section at the upstream section is given by, I call this as A is equal to 3.5 the base width of the channel into the depth of water in the channel is 2. Therefore, it is 3.5 into 2 that is equal to 7 meters square. Now, corresponding to these dimensions, find the weighted perimeter. Weighted perimeter is equal to 3.5 plus 2 into 2. Therefore, weighted perimeter at section 1, 1 works out to be 7.5 meter. You have the weighted area you have a wetted perimeter. Find the hydraulic mean depth at section 1-1. Hydraulic mean depth at section 1-1 is given by A divided by P that is equal to 7 divided by 7.5 that works out to be 0 0.93 meter. Now, once you have a value of R, find the velocity at section 1-1 using the Manning's formula. Now, Manning's formula is given by V is equal to 1 over N S to the power of half R to the power of 2 thirds. Now, in this problem, Manning's roughness coefficient is 0.015. Now, just now you determined the value of R. R works out to be 0 0.93. Therefore, 0 0.93 rise to 2 thirds. And the bed slope is 0 0.0036 that is given in the problem. Therefore, in place of S, you substitute this 0 0.0036 rise to half. Therefore, the velocity at section 1 is given by 3.81 meter per second. Now, once you find the value of velocity, you already calculated the weighted area at section 1. Weighted area into velocity will give you the discharge at section 1. So, in the next step, I am calculating the discharge. 
So discharge Q at suction 1 1 is given by 7 the wetted area into the velocity 3.81 therefore discharge is 26.67 meter cube per second. So once you get the discharge find the specific energy at suction 1 1. At suction 1 1 the specific energy is given by E1 is equal to Y1 plus V1 square by 2G. We know that the general equation for this specific energy is given by E is equal to Y plus V square by 2G. Apply this equation at suction 1. Therefore, you have E1 is equal to Y1 plus V1 square divided by 2G. You know the value of Y. So, Y is given in the problem. How much is Y? It is 2 meters. Y1 is 2 meters. Therefore, E1 is equal to 2 plus. So, V1 is 3.81 square divided by 2 into 9.81. Therefore, the specific energy at suction 1 is given by 2.74 meter. Next step is very, very important. So, what is that step? Now, we know that for a rectangular channel, the equation for the critical depth is given by yc is equal to q square divided by g raised to one third. Find the value of q. So, q is equal to capital Q divided by b. Capital Q is 26.67. B is 3.5 given in the problem. Therefore, discharge per unit width works out to be 7.62 meter cube per second per meter. Therefore, find the critical depth. Critical depth y, yc is equal to 7.62 square divided by 9.81 whole thing rise to one third. Therefore, critical depth is equal to 1.81 meter. What is the normal depth? The normal depth or the depth given in the problem is 2 meter. Now your critical depth is below the given depth. Again I repeat, in the problem the depth of flow is 2 meter. Now you calculate the critical depth. Critical depth works out to be 1.81 meter. Now critical depth lies below the given depth. Now, 1.81 is the critical depth. Now, corresponding to this critical depth, find the minimum specific energy. Now, we know that when the flow is critical or when the depth of flow is critical, specific energy is minimum. We also one more relation. So, Yc is equal to 2 third E C or E minimum. Now I am looking for E minimum or E C that is equal to 3 by 2 Y C. Just now you determined the value of Y C that works out to be 1.81. Substitute the value of Y, y C equal to 1.81 and on simplification you are going to get E C or E minimum is equal to 2.72 meter. So, you have a specific energy calculated at suction 1. Now, you calculate the specific energy corresponding to the critical depth. Okay. Now, next step. Maximum height of the hump without causing the afflux is obtained by this relation. What is this relation? Delta Z is equal to E1 minus E C. So, what is E1? E1 is given by 2.74 and minimum specific energy is 2.715. So, which one simplification gives delta Z is equal to 0 0.03 meter. 
0.03 meter. Now, if the upstream depth of flow is raised by 2.5 meter, in the first case, the depth is 2 meter. Now, in the second case, the depth of flow is 2.5 meter. The area of flow section, whatever we did till now, we repeat the same calculations once again with reference to y2 is equal to 2.5. Therefore, at section 1, a is equal to 3.5 into 2.5, that is 8.75 meter square. For the same discharge, the velocity of flow will be, so v is equal to q divided by a, 26.67 divided by the new weighted area is 8.75. Therefore, velocity works out to be 3.05 meter per second. Now, corresponding to this, find the specific energy. So, specific energy corresponds to y2 is equal to 2.5. Therefore, E1 is equal to 2.5 plus 3.05 square where 3.05 is v2 square or v2 divided by 2.91. Therefore, the specific energy corresponds to 2.5 meter works out to be 2.97 meter. Now, corresponding to this, the required height of the hump is given by delta z again that is equal to 2.97 minus the minimum specific energy that is given by 2.715. So, on simplification, you are going to get 0 0.26 meter. So, at this stage, this problem looks a little bit complicated for you. As I mentioned earlier, I am going to solve this problem once I cover this GVF and RVF. Okay. Now, we will go to the next problem. Next problem goes like this. For the purpose of discharge measurement, the width of the rectangular channel is reduced gradually from 3 meter to 2 meter and the floor is raised by 0.3 meter at a given section. When the approaching depth of flow is 2 meter, what rate of flow will be indicated by a drop of 0.15 meter in the water surface elevation at the contracted section. Again, this problem is a combination of uniform flow and a non-uniform flow. Again, I am going to solve this problem with reference to uniform flow once I cover this GVF and RVF. Now, let us talk from the uniform uniform flow point of view. How to solve this problem? Now, the solution goes like this. From the given data, the depth of flow at the contracted, contracted section is, so y is equal to 2 minus 0 0.3 minus 0 0.15. So, that works out to be 1.55 meter. There is a typo here. Okay, I am going to correct it afterwards. It is 0 0.3 minus 0 0.15. Therefore, y works out to be 1.55 meter. If Q is a discharge flowing through the channel, then the specific energy at the upstream section is given by whatever the procedure we followed for the earlier problem. The same procedure we are going to follow here. So, E is equal to y plus q square divided by 2g a square. In the earlier problem, we applied this equation E is equal to y plus v square divided by 2g 2g. Now, in this case, in place of v, we are substituting this q by a. Therefore, you are going to get E is equal to y plus q square divided by 2g a square. Substitute the values. So, y is 2, q square is unknown, divided by 2 into 9 
0.81 into 3 into 2 square. Also, the specific energy at the contracted section is given by E2 is equal to at the contracted section, the depth of flow is 1.55 plus Q square again unknown divided by 2 into 9.81 into 2 into 1.55 square. So, on simplification, E2 is equal to 1.55 plus Q square divided by 19.22 into 9.81. So, assuming no loss of energy between two sections, we have, so delta Z is equal to E1 minus E2. Okay. Now, from substitute the two equations or equate the two equations. Okay. So, in this two equations, the only unknown is Q. So, find the value of Q. So, if you say solve for Q, Q works out to be 6.21 meter cube per second. Okay. Again, I'm going to, I repeat once again, I'm going to solve the same problem. So, once I cover this GVF and RBF. So, this covers the complete syllabus as far as this mod module 2 is concerned. Thank you very much.